internet peoples of the internet. It's me, Mamma05, and I'm a red panda pirate now. So, yeah. And today, I'm here to show off this uh, 16-bit RCA ALU that I built. And maybe show you how to build one yourself. This one isn't super compact. It's really big. And uh, looking at it now, I've, I, even myself, I'm seeing some things I could have done to make it a bit smaller. Or a lot smaller. This is my 16-bit RCA ALU. Uh, RCA stands for Ripple Carry Adder. ALU stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. These are this is the interface here. It's nothing fancy. It's just a bunch of ons and offs. Uh, we can say this is B. This is input A. This is input B. And then we can do things like invert A, invert B. Uh, oop, it's lagging. And or and add. We can add first in order to be able to use this. You need to be able to count in binary, which is basically just normal counting except it's in base 2. Next thing you need to know is how to count in binary, and that's not that difficult either, just remember your powers of 2. This one here is worth 1, then 2, then double it again, 4, then 8, then 16. So here, we've got a 2 and a 1. Add them together, you've got 3. But if we get all the way to 8, and we can add 1, and we just roll over the 9, but then when we add 1, we can't just add another to this one single digit. So instead we have to carry and then roll the first digit over and we get 10. That's basically what we're doing in binary except for we have to roll over every two digits rather than every 10 digits. So we start with zero, that's equal to zero in binary. One is one in binary. But then when we want to add one to that one, we have to carry it and then roll over the first digit and that's two. That's four in binary, and then we can add one to that, and that's five, and that's six, and then seven. We can say this down here is zero, right? And that's a one. Okay, that, the black is a one, and the rest is zeros. So we get a one. Actually, it would be the other way around, but I built this ALU backwards because I'm an idiot. So then we have one. But then we want to add one to that, so we want to roll over. And then we can add one to that. And then when we add to that, we have to roll over again. And it keeps going. And as you can see, there's a bit of a pattern that starts to show up. So every other here, like there's one black, so one one, and then a zero, and then a one, and then a zero. And here it's two zeros, and then two ones, and then two zeros, and then two ones. And then you can keep repeating that, seeing as, as that's in the twos place. And here, we get to the uh, the fours place. So then we have t four zeros, and then four ones, and then four zeros, and then four ones. And we start to make this kind of pattern. And I'm, a, I'm an absolutely horrible teacher, so uh, you're more likely to learn stuff from the description. If we wanted to say add 1 plus 1, we would hit the add switch. And then let's say A is set to 1. Again, I built this backwards. We would be doing it over there, but I built it backwards on accident. And we can see the result, the output, is 1. But then if we add B, that's 1 plus 1, then it becomes a 2. Now if we wanted to say like that, that's 2 plus 1, that is 3. And then if we added 2 plus 2... There's four, and then we add two plus f two plus three, and there's six. We can also do or, meaning that if either one of these is turned on, it'll give an output. So if this slot in A is true, then the output is true. And there's also and, and this will only, well, we should do both. This is and, and this will only be true if A See, it's giving no output. If A and B are both true, then the output will be true. And then we can invert A. So we can say, if we want to add 2 plus 2, and we get 4. But then I say, I invert A, and all of the A's, the zeros all become 1's, and the 1 becomes a 0. And suddenly you get something that looks like this. It would be the same result as if we hit this, uh, if we had this here. Oh, 
But then we can invert A. And it's simply 2 plus 2. We can also invert B. So now let me show you a bit of how to make this ALU. This is fully buildable in survival Minecraft if you really want to do that for whatever reason. But let, me, let me show you a bit of the basics. So here we have the adder for doing binary math. Uh, what we take here is we take two inputs. We can say this is X and this is Y. And we take these two inputs. And then what we want to do here is we want to turn these inputs, run them through an XNOR gate. And what this XNOR gate does is essentially it only works. It doesn't see if neither of these inputs are on, it doesn't give an output. And if one of them is on, it doesn't matter which one of them. If either of them is on, it gives an output. But then if both of them are on, it again doesn't give an output. And then, what we can do is we take the carry in. The carry in is how this these adders communicate with each other. It tells it how to carry. We can carry in. Here, so we we would put another x ex, xnor gate. It's exclusive not or or exclusive or. And we can take two inputs. And this is the carry, which communicates with the last one. This is the carry in. And then we're going to do it again with this input here. So essentially what this does is it says, okay, if it is 1, if the value being put in here is 1, then we, the value we should put out is 1. But if the value is something like 2, or it has two, 1 plus 1 here, then it should not give an output, but instead it should carry. And the, So we would carry like this. So we would have... This here, you put that and that there. And so uh, as soon as, see both of these are on, so neither of these redstone torches are here are on. And then this is the carry here. And this carry will tell the next adder that, hey, we need to overflow into you. So this is equal to zero. And this will carry out into the next one and act like it's inputting a one. And then it'll add again. If the inputs are the same, instead of giving an output, we're going to carry over to the next adder, and we're going to ask it to treat that like it is value y. Assuming this is x, this is y. But then the next adder has to ask, again, is the, in is the carry input and the sum of these two at being added together, are they both 1? And that's going to compare its own x and y, but then it's going to compare, let's see, these two here. So it's going to compare is this and this the same with this carry here. So we can drag this carry down into here and then it's going to compare these two yet again. And if these two are the same, it will not give an output. So both of these are X. So th this is a two digit. These are two digits here. We could go all the way up to three. And then if we put in one for X plus nothing, it equals one, so that's the output you're going to get. But then if you have x plus y is equal to two, then ask to carry into this next adder, which has to say, and it's going to compare those. And if not, then it's going to give an output. That's our two. But then if you have x here, this is three. Then both of these are going to be the same, and it has to carry over the next adder. But there is not an adder. There is not. This is only a two-bit adder. Whoops. So then we would take the carry from this part over here, and the carry from over here has to come and down out to here, and that will be its own output for the result. I've probably done a horrible job explaining it. You can find some sources down in the description. And then once we string all these adders together, we can. I have 16 total adders over here that all feed into each other, doing the same exact operation again and again and again. It says, are these the same? If so, put a 1 into the next adder. If not, we're just going to output a 1 directly into this pixel here until it gets all the way to the very end. Then there is the OR, which, I mean, an OR gate is just... I mean, come on, do I really have to explain an OR gate? You turn that one on, it 
gives an output, you turn that one on, it gives an output, you turn any combination of these two levers on, it gives an output. An AND gate is just, both of these have to be the same, so. If this one is on, this redstone torch still won't turn off, uh, so this will remain powered. Uh, if this one is on, that redstone torch, this redstone torch will remain powered, so that redstone line will still be lit. But then if both of, both of them are on, this redstone line won't get any power. This here is a NAND gate, not AND. If you give two inputs, it gives no output. We could place the redstone torch here. This will turn it into an AND gate. You get two inputs that are the same, and it gives an output. So that's, that's our basic logic here. And we have invert A and invert B, which basically is a toggleable NOT gate. And this is our input. But then we want to know if this NOT gate here should actually be on. Should this be run through a NOT gate? And what we can do here is we can use comparators. It's a comparator. If it is given an input through the back, it'll give an input through the front. Very simple. But if you give an input to the side, which is equal to or greater than the input to the back, it will not let that signal through. So you can turn this into a toggleable gate. So what you can do is we can take this NAND gate here, not a NAND, the comparator, and we can say, is this comparator powered from the side? If so, we're not going to let that signal through. And then there's another comparator over here. And then there's this NOT gate here, so this signal he that is being input through here, so that this comparator will not get a signal when this comparator does get a signal. And then we can take a signal to here, this will go here, and power that, so that this NOT gate will turn off. And then when we have a signal through here, without this rev inverting the signal, this signal output here will be the same as our input, Unfortunately, uh, the comparator has to be level with that input. So now, the the input will always be opposite of what the... The output will always be opposite of what the input is. Because this, co this comparator does not have a signal being put to the side. So it allows the signal to get through to this redstone torch. But then, we turn this on. This, res this comparator... It now becomes locked, the signal can't get through it, but this comparator becomes unlocked and the signal can get through it, so now the signal is always the same. I'm probably doing an absolutely terrible job of explaining these, but the description. So then for our 1-bit one, our one ALU, what we can do is we can take this, this is our input for A, and then we can duplicate it for B, we can pretend this is our B input, and then we would run this to each of the individual logic gates, which would all have their own output. And then, using this exact same system with the comparator, which allows the signal to get through, we can turn on or off that comparator and let the signal through on each individual gate over here with the adder or the and or the or. So if I turn on add, we can see this turns off. This line right here goes all the way around to the add. where the comparator for each adder here will be turned off so that you, a signal from the adder can be let through. And this busing here will carry it to every single one of these comparator gates from the adder so that the signal from the adder can always get through. And that's how my ALU works. I probably explained it pretty dang horribly, but that's that was I did my best to explain it. There will be some extra links and stuff you can look at in the description if you're interested in seeing more. I might one day try and compact this a bit farther, I'd compact it down into something smaller that it's a bit faster, and maybe one day I'll turn it into a full-on CPU, which I can use in a, com a computer. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, like and subscribe to support me directly for free. Uh, goodbye!